that was in the market for one of these multimeters with oscilloscope capabilities. This is the FNERSI 2C23T. Was on sale on AliExpress. I'm about $100 Canadian into this. So I'm going to capture a couple of demo waveforms, right? I'm going to make it look easy when actually it isn't. Okay. So right out of the box, uh, this thing might frustrate a lot of people. And uh, to the point that you may think that it's defective. Uh, it's quirky, but not defective. And it's quirky in a way that an oscilloscope might be if the parameters aren't set right, or you may not get a waveform at all, or maybe worse, where the waveform that you get is not actually the waveform that you think you have. As in most things, there's a learning curve here. So after these waveforms here, we're going to go in the studio. I'm going to show you uh, what the quirks are and uh, maybe I can help with shortening that learning curve. I'm going to start off with demonstrating a crankshaft position sensor waveform. Right? So like imagine if uh, you're able to do a quick check on the crankshaft position sensor with something this portable, right, without dragging out a full-fledged oscilloscope. Uh, how convenient that would be, okay? So, uh, you guys sit tight while I go and uh, back probe that sensor. So that's not too shabby, right? That is enough detail to be able to tell whether the crankshaft position sensor waveform is good or not. All in a nice little handheld little device like this. Nose setting, I got five millisecond time division and a two volt vertical for division. Pretty good. For the second capture demonstration, I want to show how the FNERSI 2C23T does for communication bus work. So this is a 2002 F-150 prior to 2008 where the modern day CAN took place. So this is the J1850 uh, PWM protocol. Um, I discussed this at length in gadgets number 64 if you're interested. And in keeping with the minimalist approach of this video, I didn't even use a breakout box. So those are just the Hantec pin uh, cables plugged right into the DLC on pins number two and pin number 10. And there is the communication waveform at J1850 PWM. I mean, that's enough clarity that you can uh, do some work around here and know that your CAN bus is okay without taking out a full-fledged oscilloscope. I'll stop it here. I'll save it. So to be clear, all I did was save the bitmap, just a screenshot. It does not have the ability to save waveforms. How would it do, or how well could it capture um, the modern day pin six and pin 14 cans. Well, I already have one in memory here that was taken. And that's what that looks like. Pretty damn good. Enough to work with. So really nice, right? And nothing to it. Remember what I said about the learning curve. So let's head out into the studio. Now this BNC to BNC cable that I looped from the single generator output to channel one input does not come with the device. But if you decide on purchasing the 2C23T, I highly recommend that you get yourself one of these cables. Long press on these two keys switches from the built-in single generator back to the oscilloscope easily back and forth in between them and with that cable in place there is no better setup for you to become 
a armchair oscilloscope expert in no time. It's a very, very convenient, compact way to get to know an oscilloscope. We have the single generator feeding a 10 kilohertz square wave. Long press to enter into the oscilloscope mode. Pay attention here in the top left hand corner which indicates the time division at 50 nanoseconds right now as I continuously increase that. Okay, so and notice that the frequency says zero kilohertz. Uh, not telling the truth, right? 100 nano, 200, and so forth. We're still saying 0, 0.0 on the frequency report. 2 microseconds. 10. Now we're getting the 10 kilohertz and we've got our square wave indicated. Okay. Prior to that, when our sample rate was just too fast, we were not properly acquiring the signal. And that's kind of what you would encounter when you're trying to get a capture and you're out there and an engine is running and so forth. You have to understand this principle here. Now watch the quirk. I'm going to continuously increase the time per division here. Okay. Notice that all of a sudden we're, this thing is lying. We're, we're kind of getting an indication that we're getting a capture, but it's telling us that it's got 5 kilohertz instead of 10 kilohertz. Let's continuously increase this from 1 millisecond, 2 milliseconds, 5, 10. So now we got our square wave again, or we think that we do. Notice that it says that it's at 83 hertz. Like you've got to be kidding me, right? Very, very misleading. Because now you think that you've got your square wave, but you don't. And it's reporting uh, in error. All right. Let me continue to increase that. So now it's not uh, capturing at all. Okay? So I'll tell you what you should do here. Always start your capture at the shortest uh, time division. Okay? and work your way up. Increase, 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 increase until you get the first wave that you get is the true wave. Okay, That can save you a lot of frustration. Does that mean it's defective? I'm going to say no. Okay? Oscilloscopes do not like to have parameters that are way, way out of the expectation. So it's something that we have to kind of understand, uh, have a degree of respect for, and be mindful of it. Okay, so now you know. So this thing has an oscilloscope mode, a single generator, and of course it's a multimeter. Standard, you know, volts, amps, Diode check, capacitance, resistance. I won't dwell on this mode, all right? Like most of us know how to use a multimeter. Except to say that prior to this purchase, my highest resolution multimeter was a 6,000 count one. And now with this purchase, I now own a 10,000 count multimeter. To know more about what is meant by counts, uh, I invite you to have a look at gadgets number 181, where uh, I go into more detail on that. So I very much like what I see here with this FNERSI 2C23T. Talk to you guys soon.